Welcome to the functional hip and butt workout. We're almost always doing functional workout, but this is especially designed to help your hips and your glutes, your butt, to do what they're supposed to do and keep you upright in standing, running, walking, whatever you want to do. So we're starting with a balanced position, swinging the leg in half a circle around you. Start standing on the left side and then swing the right leg around you. You can point the toes if you want to and slightly turn the leg out or if just the balancing and the swinging is enough for you, just have the foot hanging. <laughs> the arms are kind of wrapping around your upper body to counteract the momentum you're creating with the legs. <coughs> Try the other side. So functional mostly means we're doing a full body workout, full body, no isolation. And so here we go, standing on the right side and I'll swing the left leg around you in half a circle. Same thing if you want to challenge yourself, you're lifting the leg up a little higher, picking the leg up, or going a little faster, or going a little further. So functional also means that we're using movements that the body usually uses or in a normal function of the body uses. So standing is one of them, and running and walking is one of them, of course. So these one-legged balance exercises are especially good to strengthening your hips. And let's release a bit. Mobility for the spine and some warming up for the glutes. Here we go. Come into a wide stance, dip the hips low and back, hands come onto the inside of your knees, and then dive forward, arching the back, then exhale, rounding and sucking in your navel, come slightly up, rolling, and then dive forward again, arching the back, exhale, roll back up. So remember your spine goes from your tailbone to the crown of your head. So you do want to include your hips, your sacrum, and your skull, your head, including all of your cervicals into this rounding and waving motion. Wonderful. <coughs> this is fully functional, so I'm running on the spot just to get everything really warmed up. You can make this lower high impact as you wish. So either you're really running, jumping from one leg to the other. You can also move back and forwards or left and right a little bit or run in a circle if you have the space. And you wanna engage the arms so the shoulders can turn contralaterally, diagonally to those hips. And if you wanna make this a little more high impact, you can, of course, pick those knees up or run forward and backwards sprint forward and backwards. You can do all you can imagine, given you have the space. And I do encourage you to do this barefoot, just roll through your feet here. <coughs> Wonderful, I guess you're warmed up now. So let's start with a glute exercise that is also a great balance training. So here we go. Bend forward, upper body parallel to the floor, standing, left leg is bent, kneecap pointing towards your second, third toe. And I'll simply lift the back leg without momentum, without shooting or lifting it up too quickly. Control the way up and control the way down. Keep your hip points parallel to the floor at all times. Same with your shoulders and your arms. You can see that really nicely here. So everything is square. Everything is parallel to the floor. And now dip forward as much as you can with your navel and with your sternum and keep lifting the leg. Shake it out a bit. Shake, shake, shake. Run a bit on the spot if you need to. That was a lot on your hip. Then open your arms and bend forward right leg is the standing leg for the other side lift the leg leg up and down control the movement as if you wanted to stop at any time so 
Here we're working functionally on the stability of the leg. And of course, this is not a guided movement. So this is an open free chain. There's no machine guiding you. You can basically go wherever you want. So you have to guide your own movement. This is also very important for functional exercises that you're not helped in any way. So you do need to control your own movement, which is what you just did brilliantly. Now let's see if you're ready for this one. The leg pendulum. Shooting leg back and forth. Starting on the left leg. Now swing the right leg up, come back into standing and swing the leg backwards. Now if you're swinging forward, just stay upright, shoulders above your hips, but when you swing backwards, bend forward. Unless you have really, really open hips. Uh, then you're a ballerina and you can do an arabesque very nicely. But for the normal sports people, just bend forward 90 degrees and then kick the leg back. Just as we did before. With this great challenge of a balance. All right. If you need a break, you can pause the video at any time. If not, come into position for the other side. That's leg pendulum. This time stand on your right side and I'll swing the left leg up and down. So we do these challenges for your balance to really make you appreciate when you can run or stand on both of your legs. And you will figure that over time, this will not actually be a challenge anymore for you. You will be like, okay, let's go. Let's stand on one leg. What's the point? And this means that I succeeded in teaching you how to use your legs in a functional way that challenge or the balance is no challenge anymore for you. And you can go to the next level. So here we have a side leg lifting. If your legs are starting to get tired, remember you can pause the video. If not, start on your left leg and now lift your right leg to the side. I do like to use my arms as well to make this a real full body workout and give those arms a direction to either side. I like to imagine that I'm pulling my elbow out of my shoulder girdle or pulling my pinky finger out of my elbow and my elbow out of my shoulder. This gives you a lot of space in those shoulders and avoids the contraction that we sometimes do when we're really focused and concentrated in the neck. Do a few more. And then try the same thing on the other side. So stand on your right leg, foot is parallel, kneecap is pointing towards your toes. And now open those arms and lift this leg. If you can, lift the leg parallel to the floor. So the foot reaches hip height. This is only possible though, if you have a normal hip, if you lean sideways slightly. Lean sideways slightly and this will engage your oblique muscles, your side, your waist, your side abdominals. Keep breathing. And this is also the last standing exercise that we're doing. So enjoy it while you can. This is your last one. And now get grounded. Get to the ground, get a mat or a towel if you need to and then come into reverse plank position. Fingers are either pointing towards your feet or slightly out so you can open the shoulder more. And then lift those hips up and lower them down without sitting down though. I would like you to stay hovering when you're lowering and not sitting down. Don't touch the ground. Rather imagine every time you're coming up to be extending the whole front side of your body, all the way from the toes to your sternum and then lifting the chin slightly into the crown of your head. 
do a few more. You've been doing fantastic. Yes, lower down and then roll on to one side. We're coming onto the elbows this time, so you're releasing your wrists a bit. So right elbow down, come onto the side and now lift those hips up. A little harder is when you're having your hand in your hip. A little easier is if you're extending the arm alongside your ear. This will put a little more weight onto your elbow and make it a little easier for you in your hips and side waist. Here again, don't sit down, don't touch the ground, keep hovering. And I do want you to focus on lifting your hips as high up as you can. Remember your shoulder stays away from you, you're not collapsing in the shoulder girdle. Get back down, swing or shift those legs to the other side. And here we go, elbow plank. Come onto the side, both legs straight, one foot on top of the other. Stay in one long straight line and now lift those hips up. Avoid looking to your feet because that might you hunch or crunch forward. You can see it from the side here, stay in one nice long line, sternum lifted, chin lifted, crown of your head shooting out, so no crunching forward. This is really just a side hip lift. Don't touch the ground at any time, just keep extending the hips up. Wow, that's great stereo sound if you're having headphones on. I didn't even know that was doing this. All right, reverse plank. So we did the dipping and the lowering and the lifting and the lowering, but this time we're standing up. So try again, come into reverse plank, fingers pointing towards your feet or slightly turned out, hands underneath your shoulders and now go up with the legs. Lift those legs up shoot them up. You can use a little bit of momentum here. What I want you to do is to not sag in the hips. Lift those hips up, keep them up, and second, observe your shoulders. Do not collapse in the shoulder girdles. Keep your collarbones smiling, your chin is up, your sternum is open. Wonderful, I'm sure that looked amazing. So we're releasing shoulders and wrists and elbows here and we can lie down onto our bellies. Chest and forehead can stay on the ground. All I need you to do is lifting those thighs. So legs are straight, lift the thighs off the ground, not just the calves, not just the lower leg, but the whole leg. Lift those thighs and then beat those heels. If you can, rotate those legs out slightly. This will engage the inner glutes and then beat those heels as fast as you can. Keep beating, keep breathing. You can count in your head. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Again, keep breathing. This is your tempo. One more. Yes. All right, turn around. Come onto your back. Make sure you have a little bit of a cushioned surface you're lying on. And then bend the knees 90 degrees, knees over your hips, hands are over your shoulders. Keep your shoulders and the head down on the ground and then extend one leg and the opposite arm behind you. What I would like you to do, this arm and leg movement is not very difficult, but controlling the core is. So control your hips, control what your spine is doing. A little bit of an arch for your lower back. Navel is pulling in. Then pull your waistline in, narrowing your hip points, getting a really strong center and core. All right, I hope your shoulders are relaxed. This is a little bit of an easier version of a side plank. We're on our elbow and on the knee. And the upper leg is coming up and down. So this lower position is 
a lot easier now since we're not extending the lower leg. So you can really focus on the upper leg working up and down. And if possible, don't touch the ground with the toes. Point the toes just to engage the leg a little further. And then lift and lower without touching. You can keep the hand in the hip. That just looks best. Forearm is firmly grounded in the floor as well as your lower leg. Feel your medial gluteus. That's the side of your butt. Working the side butt here on the other side. So turn around, elbow and forearm on the ground, knee flexed, knee bend on the ground. And here we go, lifting. This is also your last toning workout, strengthening workout exercise for this video. But we're back, don't worry. We're gonna stretch a little bit to ease it all out, to get all this toning out of our bodies. But for now, keep working. Keep lifting without lowering all the way to the ground. Keep breathing. Remember to stay in one long, nice line. No collapsing in the shoulder, shoulder away from the ear. Yeah, you did it. Functional hip and butt. And now we're stretching already. Come into a really wide stance, feet are parallel. You can stretch your legs out with stretching the hamstrings and the adductors. So first lean forward and you decide if you're going all dynamic as I'm doing here. So like bend forward, fold all the way forward and then come back up into extension. When coming into extension, come all the way up with the upper body parallel to the ground. So don't twist while you're crunched and hunched and bent over, but always twist while being long, functional, and with your spine all long and elongated. Perfect. Then come together with your feet, forward fold for the whole back line, hamstring stretch and back stretch. Feet are parallel. Now push those heels into the ground. Mount of your big toe is also grounded. And now simply bend one leg and stretch the other. And swing the upper body from one side to the other. You can relax your shoulders, relax the head, relax the hair. And have a really easy going release of the back line. Remember hamstrings go from our heels to our sitting bones. So while the heels are pressing down, your sitting bones wanna pull up. Great. So since we did so much glute work here, I do want you to stretch your glutes a bit so you can still walk today and tomorrow. So first you cross your right ankle over your left knee and sit back and down as much as you can. If you're still fancying a little bit of a glute and thigh workout, you can go really, really deep. And if not so much, you decide how deep and low you're going. Try to extend those arms. Remember to pull those elbows out of the shoulders and those pinky fingers out of the elbows. And if you can, bring those arms overhead, opening, like embracing a huge pool ball, big ball. And then release. Last stretch on the other side. So you wanna cross the left ankle over the right knee. And then sit as low as you want. Dip those hips back and down. Extending the spine, reaching the arms overhead, releasing the shoulder blades down over the rib cage. So I hope this helped you to gain more balance, more functional control over your hips and butt for whatever sport or workout or exercise you're doing. If it's for running, for jumping, 
even for swimming, for skiing, for biking, hiking, climbing, whatever you're doing, have fun with it and I'll see you all next time. Bye. <laughs>